who likes you. Yeah, dogs like me. She looks like you. With all the civil wars, Star Treks, and suicide squads, there were bound to be some flicks that flew under your radar in the summer of 2016. To be honest, I feel kind of sorry for these people. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best movies you missed this summer, 2016 edition. Come and play with me. I cannot play with you. I'm not tame. For this list, we're taking a look at movies we thought would make it big in the summer of 2016, but despite their quality, disappeared without much fanfare. We can't talk to you. We're dead. No, I... Yeah, I get it. Number 10, pop star, never stop, never stopping. Ever since I was born, I was dope. The Lonely Island was one of the defining elements of Saturday Night Live in the late 2000s with their hilarious, catchy, and iconic digital shorts never failing to go viral. Whisper in my ear that you want some more, and I jizz in my pants. <laughs> so it made sense for the group to tear apart the insane world that is modern pop music on the big screen. In Popstar, Andy Samberg plays superstar Connor For Real, while fellow Lonely Islanders Akiva Schaffer and Yorma Taconi play his former bandmates. Ever since Style Boys broke up, Lawrence has been mad at me. He claims he wrote my famous catchphrase verse. The movie is an outrageous and pitch-perfect send-up of stars like Justin Bieber and celebrity culture in general, featuring tons of cameos and new songs from the group. Owen, oh, that sucked. I'm trying to sell a record, not stroll down memory lane. That shit made me look like a has-been. It's even been called Spinal Tap for a new generation. So why it only made $10 million is a mystery to us. But seriously, man, I'm, I'm, I'm real honored, dog. Uh, I'm not gonna let you down. You're my idol, right next to Jesus <laughs> and Morgan Freeman. <laughs> yeah. Number nine, The Neon Demon. Beauty isn't everything, it's the only thing. Nicholas Vinding Refn remains one of the most creative and daring minds in Hollywood, as evidenced by this 2016 feature. In this stylish horror film about the fashion industry of all things, Elle Fanning's aspiring model Jessie moves to LA, only to find herself the object of envy by her peers. They want to be me. Through carefully chosen dialogue and stylistically slick visuals, the tension then ramps up until the neon demon reaches its ending sequence, which we wouldn't dare spoil here. They starved to death, hoping, praying that one day they'll look like a second-rate version of me. Needless to say, the film received polarizing reviews and only made $3 million at the box office. But this is still a film that needs to be experienced at least once. It's everything. Number eight, the BFG. It was the witching hour when the boogeyman comes out. It's honestly a complete shock to us how this one underperformed. Not only is it based on one of the most beloved children's books of all time, written by the inimitable Roald Dahl, it was also directed by Steven Spielberg from a script written by Melissa Matheson, the writer responsible for E.T.'s screenplay. Where am I? Giant country. It also stars Spielberg's newest muse Mark Rylance as the titular character, who is mostly done up in CG, but still manages to give a magical and literally larger-than-life performance. Why did you take me? Because I hear your lonely heart. The film focuses on the big friendly giant's adventure with a young orphan girl named Sophie, and is Spielberg at his whimsical best. This is a Disney movie that deserved to be experienced in theaters. Rams, Sophie, hide. Number seven, Captain Fantastic. What we created here may be unique in all of human existence. We don't see Viggo Mortensen on screen as much as we once did, but that makes it all the more exciting when he's in a film as good as Captain Fantastic. I miss mom. Mom needs to be in the hospital right now. Mortensen plays a father who's been raising his six children in a forest away from the corrupting forces of the real world. But when his wife dies, he faces the challenge of potentially having to reintegrate his family into society. We can't go to mommy's funeral. We have to do what we're told. We want to see mom! In addition to Mortensen's moving performance, the film also gets great turns from the group of child actors playing his family. How did you kill those chickens? With an axe or a knife? <laughs> By the rotisserie chicken, so you buy it on 
it's already dead. This film had the crowd on its feet for 10 minutes at the Cannes Film Festival. If that's not proof of its resonant family drama, we don't know what is. Our children shall be philosopher kings. Makes me so indescribable we have here. Number six, Swiss Army Man. I think if I die, I might really miss you. Oh, you're the worst. Unlike most entries on this list, there's a pretty concrete reason why nobody saw this masterpiece of absurdity. It's strange, strange, strange. Paul Dano plays Hank, a man trapped on a deserted island who comes across something unusual, a farting corpse played by Daniel Radcliffe. Hank realizes he can use the corpse as an all-purpose tool to return to civilization. But he also forms a relationship with the body, and they bond over things like movies, partying, and love. If you don't know Jurassic Park, you don't know shit. If the truly insane premise isn't enough to convince you to see it, Swiss Army Man also features fantastic turns from Radcliffe and Dano. You know what? Talking about it doesn't even really do it justice. You need to see this one for yourself. I saw your and made it my Number five, Florence Foster Jenkins. Wanna try another take? Well, I don't see why. That seemed perfect to me. This is Meryl Streep's second film in as many years where the legendary actress plays some sort of musician. Though unlike 2015's Ricky and the Flash, this one is based on real events. I'm Ricky Randazzo, and I'd like to take this minute <laughs> to introduce my band, The Flash! In this biopic from director Stephen Frears, Streep plays the titular singer, who rises to prominence as an opera singer despite her lack of talent. Streep is wonderful in the role, as is expected, but we also see great work from Hugh Grant as Jenkins' husband and manager, and Simon Helberg as her pianist. She's remarkable, isn't she? Fans of Streep and Freer's previous work should definitely check this one out, as should anyone interested in a quirky piece of music history. This is what we live for, isn't it? This moment. Number four, Hell or High Water. You know, the bank loan, just enough to keep your mama poor. Thought they could swipe her land. This is one part modern western, one part heist film, all parts incredible. Another successful genre-defying effort by Scottish director David Mackenzie, Hell or High Water features Ben Foster and Chris Pine as a pair of brothers who carry out a series of bank robberies to save their family's ranch. True to form, Jeff Bridges plays the Texas Ranger out to bring them to justice. These boys know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to raise a certain amount, that's my guess. Let's go! It's a film that's visually arresting, tense and powerfully acted especially by its three stars, taking a storyline that was once an overused formula and turning it into a modern classic. Trust us, this is one you should make an effort to see, come hell or high water. Love you, Toby. Mean it. Love you too. Ah! You wanna get us killed? Ah! Number three, The Shallows. <laughs> In the three-plus decades since Jaws first made us afraid to go in the water, there hasn't really been an aquatic-based horror movie worthy of the same praise. Well, that is until summer 2016, when we got this killer shark thriller starring Blake Lively. I finally got that alone time. Super overrated. <laughs> Lively plays a medical student who gets stranded far away from shore while surfing in Mexico and has to live through an onslaught of attacks from a great white shark if she wants to survive. It's definitely not the most original idea, but thanks to its incredible cinematography, a movie-owning performance from its star, and the fact that it makes sharks scary again, The Shallows has enough bite to separate it from similar films. Time to go. Number two. Kubo and the Two Strings. If you must blink, do it now. Pay careful attention to everything you see. Stop motion animation studio Leica has been on a bit of a winning streak since 2009's Coraline, but their 2016 effort might be their crowning achievement. It's time to follow my own path. My name 
is Kubo. Kubo is the visually dazzling story of its title character, voiced by Game of Thrones Art Parkinson, as he journeys to retrieve his long-lost father's magic armor in order to defeat his evil aunts and his grandfather, the Moon King. Your magic is growing stronger. You need to learn control. Obviously, Laika's incredibly detailed and flawless animation is the true star of the show. But the film's emotional core is certainly strengthened by a voice cast that includes Charlize Theron, Ray Fiennes, and Matthew McConaughey. You've got my attention. I promise I won't even blink. I actually don't think I even can blink. Do I have eyelids? One of the best-reviewed movies of 2016, Kubo's a magical adventure that should have been experienced by more people. This is my story. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I was in love with you, and you decided to marry my uncle, which makes you my aunt. <laughs> you lost? Oh, oh, no. Yeah, you are. Dearest Isabel, I can't stop thinking about the time I spent with you. Dearest Tom, when I first saw you, I felt like I knew you, and I couldn't stop seeing my life with you. Number one, the nice guys. You know, nobody got hurt. People got hurt. I'm saying I think they died quickly, though, so I don't think that they got hurt. There was no greater cinematic injustice this summer than seeing this stylish, fun, and creative action comedy fail to connect with audiences. Not only does it star the shockingly well-matched Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe as a private eye and an enforcer, respectively, in late 70s Los Angeles, it's also directed and co-written by Shane Black the action comedy guru behind such scripts as Lethal Weapon, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and Iron Man 3. What this team ended up producing was two hours of beautifully quippy dialogue and a conspiracy involving both the automobile and pornography industries. It's not a porno! You know, I have neighbors. In a summer filled with sequels and a variety of other disappointments, a couple of nice guys might have been just what moviegoers needed. Well, we can do this the easy way, or we can we're currently doing it the easy way. Okay, Jesus. Do you agree with our list? It ain't right. Which movies do you wish more people had seen this summer? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.